The Mandalorian Season 3 brings to us the return of our favorite Mandalorian and Yoda-esque duo in Star Wars. After the somewhat negative reception of The Book of Boba Fett, many fans were either skeptical of this new season of The Mandalorian or excited for Star Wars to get back to some high-level storytelling. With the premise of retaking Mandalore, there was a lot to be excited about. With that being said, how did The Mandalorian Season 3 turn out? Was it as good as the previous two seasons? Was the dark cloud of the Book of Boba Fett too much to overcome? Did the season do a good job at progressing the Mandoverse? Hello everybody and welcome to another video. My name is The Goldman and today we are going to talk about The Mandalorian Season 3. Before we discuss The Mandalorian Season 3, we need to discuss the giant dark cloud that hangs over this season, and that is The Book of Boba Fett. If you watched my Book of Boba Fett one year later video I made a few months back, you would know I have a strong hatred for the series. There are a lot of Star Wars shows and movies that I don't like. The Bad Batch is one, for example. I may dislike it, but at least I can say it's its own series that is completely harmless. Or a movie like Solo. A fine movie that doesn't do any harm to anyone. I cannot say the same about the book of Boba Fett. Sure, most of the series is inconsequential, like what happened with the war on Tatooine as of right now doesn't affect anything else, but the decisions they made with Mando and his story have great consequences. Firstly, we all know how it greatly diminishes the ending of Mandalorian Season 2. Mando and Grogu's emotional goodbye was now undone only a year later. Now, at the time, I came to to terms with the fact that Mando Season 2 was kinda diminished, but I had optimism that this decision wouldn't ruin Mando Season 3. I thought they would surely explain that Mando and Grogu were reunited in a different show, and for viewers that didn't watch the Book of Boba Fett, it would be weird for a second, but that would be it. The story would be able to progress from there. But boy was I wrong. The first episode of this season makes no attempt to explain what happened. All we get is Mando saying he completed his mission and then Grogu was returned to him. At the end of the day, I get that this is all semantics. If we took the exact episodes of the Book of Boba Fett and put them under the Mandalorian title, then this wouldn't be a problem. It's kind of the same thing with the complaints about there being Mando-focused episodes in the Book of Boba Fett. People only complained because the title of the series was The Book of Boba Fett, and two episodes barely featured Boba Fett. So I get those who disagree with me telling me that if I ignore show titles, this isn't a problem. And yeah, it isn't a problem to me, but again, what about the people who hadn't watched the book of Boba Fett? Other than the story, what made The Mandalorian so appealing to many was that it was its own story. I know people that watched the first season of The Mandalorian when it came out without seeing any of the movies and they understood it perfectly. The Mandalorian was a show that came with no extra baggage. The Mandalorian season 2 received some criticism for having pre-existing characters show up like Boba Fett, Bo-Katan, Ahsoka, and Luke, but I've always disagreed with this criticism. Yeah, I didn't like seeing Boba Fett, but with the other three, you didn't need to know who they were to understand what was going on. You did not need to know who Luke Skywalker was to understand the gravity of the situation at the end. So both seasons of The Mandalorian were self-contained, but not season three. Telling viewers that they need to watch the book of Boba Fett to understand The Mandalorian is kinda a betrayal of the foundation that the show was built on. But as I stated before, Mando and Grogu being reunited in a different series is not the only problem. What makes the decisions made in the Book of Boba Fett even worse is that Grogu plays absolutely no role in the entire third season of The Mandalorian. Prior to writing this video, I rewatched the season, and I can confidently say that if you remove Grogu from the season entirely, almost nothing changes. The only relevance that Grogu has to the season is that he needed to go back to Bo-Katan in the second episode to get her to help Din, and then in the fourth episode we saw the flashback of how he was saved. Then in the final episode, we saw him deflect the fire so him, Mando, and Bo-Katan wouldn't get killed. With the first instance, you could have just had the droid go fetch Bo-Katan. And in the second instance, as cool as it was seeing Ahmed Best again, that added nothing to the story and could have been removed entirely. But I'll touch on that later. I would understand undoing the Season 2 finale if it meant that Grogu would play a key role in Season 3. I wouldn't particularly like the decision, but I would get it and I would be excited to see his story going forward. But nope, that's not the case. I challenge someone to please tell me 
me what Grogu's presence adds to the story this season, other than some laughs and cute moments. What I would argue is the best scene in Star Wars since 1980 was undone for almost no reason. But unfortunately, we all know the real reason. Grogu was brought back because he is insanely popular and Disney could continue to market the Mandalorian around him. And that thought process makes me depressed. Sacrificing a story for short-term profit is how franchises die. Look at what happened with DC and Justice League. Warner Brothers betrayed Zack Snyder and released a botched version of Justice League so they can make a quick buck. And now the DC brand is in shambles. I would argue Star Wars is in a much better place than DC, but let's pray to God things don't get worse. So as much as I love judging movies and shows based on their own merits, The Book of Boba Fett is a giant dark cloud that hangs over The Mandalorian Season 3 and it cannot be ignored. Now it's time to discuss the season itself. When writing these videos, I usually try to divide it into different sections that allow me to eloquently organize my thoughts. And you may be thinking that having one section on episodes 1 through 5 is quite a bit, considering it's more than half the season. But I think each one of these episodes, some more than others, resemble my biggest praises and criticisms of the season. With that being said, my biggest criticism of the season is not so much the story and messages it's trying to convey, but its approach to it. Star Wars has never had the most complex and intellectual themes it wanted to explore. I would argue the prequels, the Clone Wars, and Andor are the three that have the most to say thematically. Besides that, the rest of Star Wars is pretty simple. And that's by no means a bad thing. Star Wars is a franchise mostly directed towards children. I wouldn't expect it to be the most thematically rich story in the world. What Star Wars for the most part has excelled at is having a rather simple idea and conveying it to the audience in a relatable and powerful way. The first two seasons seasons of The Mandalorian I would say resemble the same overall message, and it's how love and family can change a person for the better. Season 1 was a more passive approach to this, where Mando is just trying to avoid the Empire at all costs until he's forced to confront them, while Season 2 is actively about Mando trying to get Grogu to his most safe place. Looking at Din Djarin from Chapter 1 compared to Chapter 16 is like looking at a completely different person, and the version in Chapter 16 is a much happier and better person. So come Season 3, I was fascinated by how the storytellers would either take a different approach to this theme about family or focus on something entirely different. Now that season 3 has concluded, the season is clearly about setting aside differences to fight for the greater good. bo unites Mando's clan and her older clan to team up together and retake Mandalore, and only by uniting are they able to accomplish their goal. That's a serviceable story I suppose, and it's definitely one not unique to Star Wars. The problem here is that it's not until the end of the fifth fifth episode that this concept is even remotely addressed. After stopping the pirate attack, the armorer takes Bo-Katan aside and tells her she thinks Bo is the one who can unite Mandalorians to retake the planet. Again, this is the end of the fifth episode of an eight episode season. The first four episodes barely touch on this idea of unity and are a complete drag otherwise. The first episode has Mando be given the task of redeeming his sins of removing his helmet. He goes to Grief Karg and asks for a droid, then he goes to Bo-Katan for some reason reason to tell her his plans to redeem himself. In the second episode, he gets a droid, goes back to Mandalore, gets saved by bo and then goes into the Sacred Waters. The third episode has them going back to the Mandalorian clan while also focusing entirely on Dr. Parshing. And then the fourth episode is mostly a side quest about saving a kid from a giant bird. The closest thing you can say these first four episodes have with what I believe to be the theme of the season is, is that the Mandalorians are working together to save the kid in the fourth episode. But they were already a clan besides bo -Katan. It's not really them coming together and setting aside their differences to save a kid. The first two episodes, while not being all that exciting, I thought planted the seeds for an interesting approach to the season, and that was the notion of re-evaluating traditional norms that are preventing people from living their happiest lives. First, we saw Mando be rejected from his people because he showed his face to someone. This is a silly rule to have. In the first episode, Mando saves the clan from this giant monster, but no one says thank you because he's a supposed traitor. With bo -Katan, she has 
given up on her quest to unite Mandalore because she failed to get the Darksaber, and the reason she doesn't have it is because she didn't properly win it in combat. Again, a silly rule. Also, the notion of the Mandalorians only following the person who wields the Darksaber is also a silly idea too. In the Book of Boba Fett, we saw Grogu choose to not be a Jedi so he can be with the people he calls a family, something we have never seen a Jedi do. All the pieces were there, and I was thinking that as the season progressed, Mandalorians would unite because they realized how dumb their traditions were and that they were only holding them back. But then comes the third episode. Mando and Bo-Katan go back to the Mandalorian clan and they are welcomed as family because they bathed in some waters. Okay, fine. They went down a different route. No biggie. But after this moment, I left myself wondering what is the season about? It's episode 3 and I have no clue. And then came episode 4 and that didn't help anything either. And it's not only that the season lacked an overall theme halfway through, it lacked a fundamental plot as well. With season 1, the story was pretty much established at the end of the first episode. This bounty hunter is stuck with this baby. What will he do and how will he change? The season is fantastic, but it's definitely not surprising in any way. We knew right from the start what was most likely gonna happen, and then it happened. With Mando Season 2, we knew from the end of the first season what the plot was. Mando needs to take Grogu to a Jedi. Pretty simple and we knew right away. Come Mando Season 3, halfway through I couldn't tell you. I've heard the argument so many times during these first four episodes that as a viewer I need to be patient and at some point everything is going to come together and make sense. I fundamentally disagree with this philosophy. It is not my job as a viewer to wait more than halfway through the story to have a remote idea of what the season is about. It is the job of the storytellers to hook me and give me a reason to keep watching. Mando finds Baby Yoda at the end of the pilot, a fantastic hook that leaves me wanting more. The first episode of season 2 ended with the reveal that Boba Fett is alive. As much as I hate Boba Fett, it was a good reveal because it left us wondering for these next few episodes, what is Boba Fett going to do and how will he interact with Mando? With A New Hope, in the opening crawl we learn that there is a giant super weapon that needs to be destroyed. Great! Something that keeps me invested as the movie progresses. With The Phantom Menace, a movie that I think is awful by the way, tells us early on that there is a planet that is being invaded and needs to be saved. Great! I am mildly invested. With The Force Awakens, the first words we see are Luke Skywalker has vanished. What happened to Luke? I am invested. With Season 3 of The Mandalorian, there is none of that until the 5th episode. In the 5th episode, we learn our characters are going to try and retake Mandalore and that Moff Gideon has escaped. Great! I am invested! But a little too late though. I have an idea that I really think would fix these problems, and it's simply taking the reveal that Gideon escaped at the end of the 5th episode and moving it to the end of the 1st or 2nd episode. This way we know right away that the Empire is up to something bad, and it leaves us with the question in the back of our heads of what's going to happen. When the Empire attacks in Episode 3, we wonder how it ties into Gideon being freed, and the whole Dr. Parshing part of the episode becomes far more engaging once you realize the Empire is up to something, instead of just wondering how this is all relevant. So those are kind of my thoughts on the story and why I feel the early episodes lacked so much momentum. I do want to shift focus to another problem I had, and I'm going to use a trigger word here. The first four episodes are almost entirely filler. But Goldman, it's not filler because of this and that and blah blah blah. The first two episodes could have easily been trimmed into just one episode. You can remove all that fluff with IG-11 because it didn't really pay off all that much anyway. I am conflicted on episode 3. The stuff on Coruscant was fantastic world building. I loved seeing how the New Republic operates. I loved seeing how they handled the people who used to work for the Empire. And I overall just enjoyed seeing Parshing and Kane go on their adventure together. Seeing the ties to the overall Star Wars universe was wonderful, but in hindsight, it was not necessary at all. If you remove this entire sequence from the season, nothing changes. Kane manipulating Parshing into getting in trouble and having his memory wiped is not important to the story of the Mandalorian. If you remove the sequence, absolutely nothing changes for the rest of the season. When Kane is asked about Parshing in episode 7, she just says he's been dealt with. We don't really need to know why. There's a lot of rumors out there that this was all supposed to happen in Rangers of the New Republic, the Gina Carano show that was cancelled, and I totally buy that. But since it was cancelled, they just added it here without wondering how it actually ties into the Mandalorian. So was this episode almost all filler? I'd say so. And the same could be said about episode 4. People were freaking out about the Grogu flashback scene. Listen, I understand the significance of having Ahmed Best play a Jedi who saves Grogu. For those of you who don't know, Ahmed Best was the actor of Jar Jar who received an incredibly unfair amount of bullying from fans after the release of The Phantom Menace. To see him loved by the community and shine in this episode is awesome and I couldn't be happier for him. But looking at these sequences objectively, it's completely useless. It does 
doesn't add anything to the episode. And while fans have speculated about how he survived Order 66, it's not important at all. When we saw Kanan in Rebels, it wasn't important how he survived Order 66. We knew he survived and that's all. So while prequel fans were freaking out because they got to see Order 66 for the fifth time in four years, I was just left wondering how this all matters. With the rest of the episode, it follows a trope that really annoys me, and that's spending a lot of time accomplishing something that narratively could be done in a few minutes. It seems to me the whole purpose of this episode was so later on Paz Vizsla would agree to help Bo-Katan because she helped save his son, but she could have saved her son in like a two minute sequence and narratively the exact same thing would be accomplished. So yeah, episode 4 was completely useless. What's really disappointing is that I'm probably going to get some comments saying I just hate fun. If you just had fun then you would enjoy these episodes. I hate when people say this. I love my Star Wars fun. Chapter 9 is like 45 minutes of straight Star Wars fun and it's one of my favorite Mandalorian episodes. I just want my fun to exist for other reasons besides being fun. I had a lot of fun with the third episode, but I can acknowledge its misplacement in this story. Every episode of season 2 is Star Wars fun at its core, and each one of those episodes mattered. So if you're going to disagree with my criticisms of the first four episodes, and in particular episodes 3 and 4, please don't say I hate fun. Now I don't think by any means these episodes were terrible, even though I was disappointed that these episodes lacked direction, I still enjoyed it relatively speaking. I'm gonna discuss this a bit more when talking about the final two episodes, but the visuals and the action were pretty good all season. Last year when the Obi-Wan series came out, it was obvious that the production team was using the volume. And if you don't know what the volume is, it's the type of technology used to film some of the Star Wars TV shows. So while The Mandalorian Season 3 definitely used the volume, the season never felt handicapped with it like Obi-Wan did. Also, Season 3 never had these dumb action sequences like the Book of Boba Fett had with its speeder chase, or Obi-Wan did with Leia running in the forest. Yeah, episode 6 was pretty dumb, but it wasn't poorly filmed. Episode 5 was also a wonderful episode. Most of my criticisms here apply to the first 4 episodes, but I didn't want to give episode 5 its own section. We've only seen a whole platoon of Mandalorians fight together once in chapter 3, and I'm talking about live action. Seeing it twice this season was awesome. This season definitely made the Mandalorians badass. And at the end of the day, I'm a sucker for seeing these characters. You could make the biggest piece of shit show like the Book of Boba Fett, and I would still enjoy watching Mando and Grogu wander around. Also, how awesome was it to see Zeb in episode 5? I haven't made a video on it yet, but I love Rebels with all my heart. So this moment here almost made me scream. So those are my thoughts on the first 5 episodes. Even though I had a lot of issues, I still somewhat enjoyed them, especially episode 5. Before I continue on with the rest of this video, only 5.4% of my viewers are subscribed to this channel. So if you're enjoying this video, please consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about chapter 6. This episode was bad. Like, really bad. I'd argue this is the worst episode of The Mandalorian as a whole. Either this or chapter 5. I didn't dislike this episode because I hate fun. I dislike the episode because it is the literal definition of a filler episode. Episode 5 ended with Bo-Katan agreeing to help unite Mandalorians to retake Mandalore. For 95% of episode 6, Bo-Katan and Mando go on a mission that has absolutely nothing to do with what they talked about in episode 5. And then at the end, we get one minor fight and she convinces the Mandalorians to help retake Mandalore. The Mandalorian is no stranger to having episodes where our main character wants something, but they must do a favor for someone else before they can get that something. Frankly, more than half the episodes in this series have this basic premise. But what makes a lot of the other episodes work so well is that we get to learn a lot about Mando or one of the side characters. The point of filler episodes is the season can take a break from advancing the plot to focus on the characters. If you look at other shows, their filler episodes are ones where you tend to learn the most about the characters. I want you to tell me this. What did we learn about Mando or Bo-Katan or anyone else in this episode? This whole side quest of stopping the droid uprising or whatever was 100% inconsequential. The only important parts of the episode were at the end. Someone could argue that this episode had some neat world building. No, it didn't. We've seen battle droids plenty of times. There was nothing unique about this particular city or whatever. I bet you a bunch
bunch of people freaked out over a Count Dooku reference. I couldn't give a shit. I guess the only part of this episode I found to be cool was seeing a droid bar. I've heard about this before from other Star Wars media, but seeing one in The Mandalorian was kinda cool. Oh, and seeing more of the Ugnaughts was awesome. But I would still disagree with this notion of good world building completely. I know a lot of people had a problem with Jack Black and Lizzo getting cameos in Star Wars. Sure, Star Wars is no stranger to celebrity cameos, but before it never took me out of the movie or show. I know a lot of people felt that way about Flea in the Obi-Wan show, but since I had no clue who that was, it wasn't a distraction for me. Jack Black kinda took me out of the episode a little bit, but at least he's an actor. But Lizzo? I got nothing against her music or whatever, but man is she an awful actress. If you're gonna have celebrities cameo in Star Wars, at least have them be competent actors. Lizzo was jarringly bad. But moving on from celebrity cameos, I want to discuss the Darksaber. The way Bo-Katan got the Darksaber was definitely anticlimactic. At the end of Season 2, the rules of the Darksaber were established. In order to properly wield it, you must win it in battle. But since Mando was the one to defeat Moff Gideon, he is the rightful wielder, not Bo-Katan. At the time, this was a great setup for a conflict down the road. Bo-Katan wanted it, but her ally had it. Will she fight him? Will she kill him? What would happen? In Episode 6, we get the reveal that Bo-Katan is now the rightful wielder of the Darksaber because some random creature in Episode 2 captured Mando and Bo-Katan defeated that creature. Sure, this follows the rules of the Darksaber, but I don't know, the writers couldn't think of a better way to resolve this story thread? Of all the possible outcomes of what was set up in Season 2, having Mando give it up over a technicality was so dumb. It kind of feels like this was a plot thread that Favreau didn't want to explore anymore, but he couldn't just leave it unresolved, so he resolved it in the laziest way possible. Moving on again, I want to discuss a certain trope that Star Wars falls victim to sometimes. What they do is they will have an episode that is useless for the first 95% of the episode, but at the end something will happen that is mildly important. Once this happens, people will argue that the episode is not filler because of what happened at the end. I hate this so much. Sure, you cannot say that episode 6 was complete filler because the last 3 minutes of the episode show us how Bo-Katan gets the Darksaber, but I don't care. This is a filler episode to me. If your 40 minute episode is only relevant because of roughly 3 minutes, that is still poor writing. You can take this final scene and put it in the beginning of episode 7 and the entire season would be better off. Thankfully The Mandalorian doesn't do this often, but episode 6 was a prime example of that. So yeah, this episode sucked. But I do want to take this time to address a common complaint about the season as a whole that's definitely relevant in episode 6, and that is Mando kind of being sidelined for Bo-Katan. The first two seasons of The Mandalorian were unquestionably about Din Djarin and Grogu. Now comes season 3. Even though Mando is still in every single episode, it's not really about him anymore. It's more so about the Mandalorians as a whole, and more specifically Bo-Katan. One of the main directors of the series, Rick Famuyiwa, came out and said that this season, the Mandalorian title no longer refers to Din Djarin. It can be anyone. I don't like this train of thought. People got invested into the series because of the relationship between Mando and Grogu. So if you want to switch up the focus of the series to someone else, that's fine, but don't expect everyone to be happy about it. I do think the notion that Mando was completely sidelined by Bo-Katan is a bit overblown. Sure, Bo-Katan was more prominent this season, but her and Mando are kind of co-protagonists this season. But I do understand a lot of the criticisms people have. So yeah, Chapter 6 was pretty bad and frankly will be skipped upon my next rewatch. So let's take a look at the final two episodes of the season. Almost everyone would agree that these two episodes are the best episodes, but are they even remotely as good as the final two episodes of season one or two? Hell no. There are a lot of fantastic moments in these final two episodes, but a lot of head scratchers as well. First, I'll talk about what I didn't like, and then I'll say what I liked. Easily the biggest issue I have with these episodes and kinda the whole season is that there's no story here, just plot. Characters talk to each other pretty much only about the events happening around them, never how they actually feel. There's this one fantastic scene in the seventh episode where Mando tells Bo-Katan he doesn't care about the Darksaber, he follows her because of her character and who she is. That's a great scene, but besides that, I can't think of any other scenes that were solely about character. Sure, we got some moments highlighting the rivalry between the two clans, but we already knew there was tension between the tribes. And then at the end, we get this cute scene 
scene where Grogu gets adopted by Mando, but we already knew how much Mando loves Grogu, so seeing Mando confess his love again was nothing special. The first two seasons had these moments of character development, just moments where two people are either talking about something personal or sharing an intimate moment. Mando and Grogu looking into each other's eyes is so emotional because the two have come so far together and now it's time to say goodbye. Is there anything like that in season 3? I guess there's the moment where they finally retake Mandalore and Bo-Katan's holding the torch, but overall, no story, just plot. When I dive deep into the characters, I love to analyze their arcs or their character development. Is there anyone in Season 3 I could analyze? Really only Bo-Katan. But she didn't really have an arc. She kinda just learned to accept Mando's clan and then united it with her original clan. No story, just plot. Now speaking of the plot, a lot of it was quite anticlimactic. From the very first episode in the series, we had heard about how Mandalore was purged and stolen from Mandalorians. So this entire two episode battle is something that has been set up since the first episode of the series, and the Mandalorians kinda take it back with ease. Usually in big battles like these, there's a moment where everything feels lost, that there's no hope and our characters are about to get screwed. There's an attempt to do this at the end of the seventh episode, the Mandalorians fall for a trap, Mando is captured, and Paz Vizsla is dead. All hope seems lost, but to begin the eighth episode, there's little actual tension going on. Mando escapes no problem, and the rest of the Mandalorians also escape no problem. I was also baffled how easy it was for Grogu to find Mando after he was captured. Grogu sure knows how to navigate a base he's never been in before, so the Mandalorians escape, call for backup, then they all attack and don't really struggle at all. The only parts of the fight where there were actual struggles was fighting Gideon. Mando finds Gideon pretty easily by the way, yeah he had that hallway fight which was pretty cool, but that was Mando's only obstacle. So he fights Gideon and gets beaten up, then Bo comes to fight Gideon and gets beaten up, Mando comes back after beating the Praetorian guards, and then the way Gideon is defeated is because the crashing cruiser burns him alive. And that's it. Gideon is dead. For now, I guess. Gideon was the big bad of the series. Sure, there are background threats like Thrawn, but for the story of the Mandalorian, it was all about Moff Gideon. He was the one who gave the order to attack Mandalore way back when. And just like that, after a small fight, he's dead. I don't know. I just expected something bigger, I guess. But sticking to Gideon, the clone reveal was incredibly dumb. From the first episode, we knew that the Empire was up to something. With all these theories about Snoke and Palpatine returning, we all speculated what Gideon was really up to. We saw those weird ass clone bodies in season 2, great, another tease. So come season 3, we learned that Gideon's master plan was to clone himself and give these clones the force. Now this reveal isn't the issue at all, it's kinda creepy and I like it. The issue here is that none of it mattered. Mando presses a button and all of the clones are now dead, and Gideon just shows up and he's angry all the clones are gone. And that's it. The whole point the Empire wanted Grogu was so Gideon could create these clones, and now it's just gone from the press of a button. That's the culmination of the cloning storyline. Will it eventually tie into Snoke or Palpatine? Maybe. But for this story, it amounted to almost nothing. Wouldn't it have been much cooler if Gideon's clones actually came to fight, and it was some big final battle that took a huge toll on Mando and Bo-Katan? It would be cheesy, but I would prefer it than nothing. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if Gideon was actually dead, but one of his clones escaped or something, and that was the villain of the next season. I would hate that, but I can totally see it happening. So that's it from Off Gideon. Kinda a wasted character, if you ask me. The last criticism I do have is an incredibly minor one, but it's one I stand by. At the end of season one, before Mando leaves, he takes a moment to say goodbye to Cara Dune and Grief Karga. He basically thanks them for everything, and they embrace, knowing a strong friendship was formed. This is basically the epilogue of the season. In season two, we don't get a moment like this, but it made sense considering the season ended right after the final battle ended. There was no epilogue in season 2, just a conclusion. The Book of Boa Fett and Mando season 3 both have epilogues, but in neither one does Mando have a final conversation with his closest ally. In the Book of Boba Fett, Mando helps save Tatooine and then just dips off screen. No final conversation with Boba Fett. In The Mandalorian season 3, he had spent the entire season with Bo-Katan. She was in every single episode. Mando even had a conversation where he told Bo how much he admired and respected her. The two grew incredibly close, but after they retake Mandalore, they give each other a subtle nod and that's it. I'm not asking for an emotional goodbye where the two confess their love for each other and they kiss, I just want a goodbye. I think the reason the lack of a scene like this bothers me is because human beings naturally value saying goodbye in some way. When we spend a lot of time with someone we've grown to 
to care about and we know it's over, people don't just leave without saying anything. I'm sure some people have experienced this a few times, but not often. People may have an elaborate goodbye or just a simple hug or something. Just a semblance of letting the other person know that this is it for a while. So when the story doesn't give us that simple goodbye, it kind of robs the audience of that sense of closure. Is this an incredibly minor nitpick? Definitely, but it's something that bugs me. Two other aspects of the season I found to be anticlimactic were the resolution of the Darksaber and the Mythosaur. With the Darksaber, it has been emphasized how big of a deal it is to wield it. The whole reason Bo was depressed in the beginning was because she wouldn't wield the Darksaber. Then she gets it back in a very anticlimactic way in Episode 6, and then it's just destroyed here. At least when the Skywalker lightsaber was destroyed in The Last Jedi, the movie treated it as a big deal. With the Darksaber, Gideon just crushes it with his hands, and then it's never addressed again. Strange way to conclude the Darksaber story. With the Mythosaur, they teased it in the second episode, and it was a big deal that Bo-Katan saw it. Then in the finale, it never shows up, and we get one shot of it sleeping underwater. Why bother including the Mythosaur? I feel like it was a Chekhov's gun that never went off. Maybe they plan on using it in the future? So those are all my issues with the final two episodes. Again, they didn't do anything I actively disliked or thought was bad. It's just a lack of character work and how certain threads were resolved that kinda bugged me. For a video that has been mostly negative so far, it's time to talk about the positives. There may be some debate over the happy ending to it all, but I loved it. Sure, I would've liked a bit more struggle, but seeing Mando just kinda retire and do his own thing helping the Republic I thought was a great way to continue his character. Mando has been through so much, and he's been fighting other people's battles for so long. In episode 4, they tease the notion of Mando one day living the peaceful life, and here he's got that. Yeah, sure, he'll go on more adventures, but for now it was a fitting way to wrap up his character. I will say this though, Grogu can't be Din's son, he's not biologically related to him. This is identity theft! It's not Din Grogu, it should be Yoda Grogu. I will never call him Din Grogu. Throughout these final two episodes, the action and cinematography was fantastic. People have rightfully crapped on the volume for limiting the cinematography of these shows. This was a big problem with Obi-Wan, as I stated earlier, but here I never had a problem with it. The final battle I thought was filmed spectacularly. Seeing the battle with the Mandalorians and the Stormtroopers with the jetpacks was awesome. Hell, even the dumbass city in Episode 6 looked pretty good. When Paz Vizsla gave his life to fight all those Stormtroopers, that was some awesome stuff. I know a lot of fans didn't like this scene because they thought Paz's sacrifice was unnecessary, and after seeing episode 8 and how easily they all escaped, it kinda was, but people forget how dying in battle is one of the most noble things a Mandalorian could do. Paz also took out an entire squad of stormtroopers that easily could have followed Bo and the rest of the Mandalorians down the hall. So no, I take back what I said before, it wasn't useless. Paz's sacrifice makes complete sense, and he probably died with great pride. And speaking of his death, how great was it to see those Praetorian guards? Sure, they looked kinda different from The Last Jedi. But but boy was I happy seeing him there. With the guards and Hux's dad and the Rey movie announced, it's a great time to be a sequel fan. Listen, I get a lot of you hate the sequels and will probably turn off the video the second I say I like them, but I couldn't be happier that we were getting some concrete connections to the sequel era. Before the best connection we got was a rendition of the Resistance theme and seeing the same species as Babu Frick. Seeing this Shadow Council talk about Project Necromancer has to be related to Palpatine or Snoke in some way. Maybe I'm just a naive idiot, but it's too good to be true. The last thing I wanted to point out that I really appreciated was that we got to see how badass Mando really is. All season, people have been saying Mando was sidelined and whatnot, but here we got to see Mando have his own hallway scene. Sure, he's not the best fighter in the world, but he's still a badass, and I appreciate that. So those are my thoughts on the final two episodes. I know I sound quite harsh on the season as a whole, but I did for the most part enjoy the ending. It was fine. Just because I critique certain aspects doesn't mean I think it's the worst thing ever. It was fun enough for me to enjoy it. It just didn't live up to the previous two seasons. But you know what I can confidently say after having watched the entire season? This season should have been a movie. As I explained before, most of the first five episodes were not important at all. The sixth episode was like 99% useless, so all you need to do is cut up the first six episodes into about 90 minutes, then tack on the final two episodes and boom, you have a movie. I kind of got the vibe that Favreau and Filoni knew what they wanted to do with this season, but they were told that they 
needed eight episodes, so they decided to drag it out as much as they could. Lucasfilm should have just made this a movie, and then used the extra budget a movie has to make the Battle of Mandalore a lot grander in scale. Have hundreds of Mandalorians fight hundreds of stormtroopers, and even have a badass space battle. I think that would have been perfect. But instead, we got eight episodes of a Disney Plus series, which turned out just fine. So, what is the future of Star Wars? First, we'll look at The Mandalorian itself, then the brand as a whole. The interesting thing about The Mandalorian Season 3 ending is that it could be a series finale. Mandalorian Season 2, I think, should have been the final season, but there were still some remaining plot threads. With this season, there's nothing. All we got is that Mando is going to do some missions for the New Republic. If this were the finale, I'd be satisfied, but reports are out that Favreau has already written a Season 4, so we're gonna get more. In in a way, I'm glad there's no cliffhanger or remaining plot threads. The next season could be pretty much about anything. I have no expectations about how character X should evolve or how story point Y needs to conclude. The Mandalorian Season 3 kinda felt constricted in a way because it had to resolve what was left from Mandalorian Season 2. But Season 4 has all the freedom in the world. I hope this is a new phase of The Mandalorian, if you will. Of course, there's a lot of speculation that they might just turn the cancelled Rangers of the New Republic show into The Mandalorian Season 4 and I'm totally down with that. People are going to say that since Season 3 wasn't great, The Mandalorian is dead. It's over. But I disagree. It's time for a fresh start. Now the future of Star Wars is interesting. In typical YouTube fashion, people freaked out because the viewership numbers of Season 3 were not as high as Season 2. This of course means that Star Wars is dead, right? Nope. There's this notion out there that because Star Wars isn't the most popular franchise anymore, that means the franchise is dying or that it's already dead. Maybe it's just me, but I don't care. Sure, Sure, it was fun to see The Force Awakens become one of the most popular movies ever made, but I don't need Star Wars to be that. The future of Star Wars currently excites me to no end. For the first time, Star Wars is really embracing the fact that its timeline spans hundreds and thousands of years. Star Wars going forward literally has something for almost every Star Wars fan. If you love The Mandalorian, well, all these shows in the Mandoverse, including an Ahsoka Tano show, are going to culminate in a movie directed by Dave Filoni. That's awesome! Are you a big sequel trilogy fan? Well, you're getting another movie with Rey rebuilding the Jedi Order. Do you want Star Wars to be super serious? Well, you got Andor Season 2 coming out next year. Do you love Star Wars animation? Well, you got Bad Batch and Visions continuing. Do you wish Star Wars would just move on from characters we know and explore the past? Well, we got The Acolyte and a movie about the first ever Jedi. For once, we're getting variety in Star Wars, and I love that. So is Star Wars not as popular as it was eight years ago? Yeah, but that shouldn't impact your investment in the franchise, whether you're happy or not. So, The Mandalorian Season 3. It's not great by any means. It was fine. In a perfect world, I would title this video, The Mandalorian Season 3, Why It's Fine, but that doesn't make for an attractive title now, does it? Thank you everyone so much for watching another one of my videos. Don't forget to like the Claude Squad, and I will see you guys next time.